Good morning and happy Friday everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamos. High pressure is continuing to build over the state, bringing sunshine and warmer temperatures. I'll let you know when we may see 100 degree highs coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter and coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a federal court set to decide how much the former president can share about the January 6th case when prosecutors say they want the actual trial to take place. Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up this morning, you've only got a few hours left to help out Idaho students get off on the right foot where you can go to drop off school supplies. CBS 2 News this morning starts now. Good morning. You're looking at Indian Creek Plaza on this Friday morning. It's August 11th, 2023. Vasily Varlamos will have your weather in just a bit, but first. Hawaii's Governor Josh Green saying it looks like a bomb went off in Lahaina after fires destroyed the town. We now know 55 people died in that blaze and that death toll could rise today. Green says it's the biggest natural disaster in Hawaii since the 1960 tsunami killed 61 people on the Big Island. Stay tuned. We will keep you updated on conditions there this morning. And for the latest, you can always head to IdahoNews.com. And we're now learning more about the Utah man who died in a shootout with the FBI. Craig Robertson's family released a statement decrying his death as senseless. In it, they described the 75-year-old as a harmless churchgoer who was simply practicing his First Amendment rights on social media. The FBI had issued an arrest warrant for Robertson after he made threats online referencing the president's trip to Utah. They reportedly began their investigation back in March after his posts were flagged on Donald Trump's social media site, Truth Social. And Niger's new military leaders, they're threatening to kill their deposed president if neighboring countries intervene. The warning comes as a group of West African nations agree to mobilize troops in response to the military takeover. Their president is spearheading that effort. He says the use of force would be a last resort and that the group is exploring other options. They previously gave the country a week to reinstate the president. That deadline passed on Sunday with no signs of intervention. And now taking a closer look at what officials are calling the largest natural disaster in Hawaii's history. An unknown number of people are missing this morning as crews continue to search for more survivors. Neighbors who evacuated now coming back home to find nothing but ashes. It's still very, very hazardous in the burn areas. Things are falling every minute around us. Shelters, they've been set up to accommodate the thousands who are now displaced. The governor saying it'll take several years and billions of dollars to rebuild. Yesterday, President Biden approving a disaster declaration for Hawaii. That's clearing the way for federal assistance. FEMA's administrator will arrive in Hawaii today, as will multiple members of FEMA's disaster relief team. The administrator, <clears throat> pardon me, notes that the situation poses some serious challenges. Limited in our ability to where we can put people because it is isolated as an island. And so we're going to work closely with the state to understand what resources they need and what types of um, create creative solutions we're going to have to bring in to help this community in the interim recovery, but more importantly, in their long term recovery. Deanne Criswell says Maui's situation, it's similar to that of Boulder, Colorado back in 2021, where an entire community burned to the ground as fire was spread by excessive winds. Now thousands have been displaced by the Maui wildfires and are receiving assistance. And turning now to developing news, a federal court hearing on the protective order that would restrict what former President Trump can say about the election conspiracy case against him is set for today. Trump's lawyers argued the order violates his First Amendment rights. It comes as prosecutors say they want January 2nd to be the date former President Trump goes on trial for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. That's just shy of three years after Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol. It's also just shy of two weeks before the first votes will be cast in the Republican race for president. Special counsel Jack Smith's team wants a speedy trial, no more than four to six weeks. Trump's defense team will likely try to slow down that process. And House Republicans say they plan to subpoena members of President Biden's family. It's the latest development in Congressman James Comer's investigation into the Biden's business dealings. For months, the Kentucky congressman has insisted the president is guilty of corruption. 
and he published a memo outlining millions of dollars in foreign funds made out to Hunter Biden and his associates. Absent, however, was any direct link connecting the president to his son's business. But Comer claims that Hunter Biden has been using his father's name to make profits. Joe Biden was the brand. So that is the first associate that came in implicated Joe Biden as being the reason they were getting this money. And the money is from bad people. The president denies any involvement in his son's business and dismisses Comer's probe as a smear campaign. And back here at home, the Idaho law meant to make transgender students use the bathroom corresponding with their biological gender on pause just before the school year starts. Idaho Capital Sun reporting the U.S. District Court temporarily blocking the enforcement of Senate Bill 1100 that took effect back on July 1st until a ruling happens. The law also allows students to sue the school if they come upon a transgender student in a bathroom. But for now, schools must continue on as they did last year. The case bringing about this temporary block allowing continued bathroom choice claims the law violates civil rights. The next hearing on this is set for September 13th. And Idaho Attorney General Raul Labrador has until 4 o'clock this afternoon to rewrite the titles of the Open Primaries Initiative. The case was over how a ballot initiative would be described. The Idaho Supreme Court ruling partially in favor of the petitioners in the case against Labrador. The petitioners, Idahoans for open primaries, arguing the title written by Labrador was deceptive. The court agrees, saying the short and general ballot titles failed to comply with Idaho code. The petitioners, however, will not be granted extra time to obtain signatures for the initiative. That request was denied. And Bruce Newcomb, former Republican Speaker of the Idaho House of Representatives, says, quote, Today's decision is a major victory for the voters of Idaho. Too many of our elected officials are handpicked by special interest groups, not by the voters they are supposed to serve. The Open Primaries Initiative will change that by giving all voters, regardless of party affiliation, the right to vote in primary elections, end quote. You can read more about this case and the Open Primaries Initiative on IdahoNews.com. Well, happening today, a brand new Lego store is opening in Idaho today. You can find it at the Village at Meridian. And to celebrate, there'll be in-store events all day long, including free giveaways and building activities. That's all month long. If you visit today through Sunday, you can even get a free iHeart Lego store tile. So get there soon. And also happening today, the USA BMX Gem State Nationals underway as hundreds of professional and amateur BMX riders from across the world are here in the Treasure Valley. Now today marks the start of the three day event. It'll be at Caldwell BMX. Races begin at 1.30 today at 9 a.m. on Saturday and 8 a.m. on Sunday. Keep in mind, parking is just 10 bucks per day. And the Western Idaho Fair kicks off later this month. And this year, you can get into the fair for free for the first four hours. That's for CBS2 Day in the Fair. It's Friday, August 18th from noon to four. Admission is on us. All we ask is that you bring a donation, just a couple cans of food to give to the Idaho Food Bank. And hey, the weekend is here. And if you're looking to check out some local arts and crafts, our friends Alana and Chris of Kissin 92.3 have an event you don't want to miss. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 here to tell you about some of the awesome events happening right here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. And if you are a fan of the arts, Nampa is having a festival of the arts, Lakeview Park, tomorrow from 9 to 6 and then Sunday from 10 to 3. Yeah, so uh, there's lots of cool things that you're going to be able to find with local artists, jewelry, uh, painting, sculptures. Now, Alana, whimsical yard art is said to be on hand at the Nampa Festival of the Arts. Do you think that's going to be like gnomes? and stuff. It could be, or like a yard flamingo with a top hat. If I swear, if there is a yard flamingo <laughs> with a top hat at the Nampa, <laughs> Nampa Festival of the Arts, it's coming home with me, it's our new mascot. Well, if you're heading out to the Nampa Festival of Arts this weekend, you're going to see some clear skies, much like what we're going to see today. Now, wind speeds will be quite light throughout the morning. We'll start to see them pick up in the afternoon. We'll reach a top wind speed of 11 miles an hour around 5 and 6 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll reach the upper 70s around 11 o'clock, jump into the upper 80s around 2 p.m., leading to a high today of 95 degrees in Boise, expected to arrive sometime between 5 and 6 p.m. today. And if you're heading out the door in the next couple of minutes, 57 degrees in temperature right now over in Nampa, 58 over in 
in Caldwell and 64 degrees. The temperature right now over in Boise, then moving up to the mountains right around average for McCall. They're sitting at 46 degrees right now. Now we're seeing that high pressure overtaking much of the West Coast. This is going to bring out that sunshine not only today, but pretty much all week this week. It's also going to allow for a warm up in temperatures. Now over in McCall, they are going to see a little bit of smoke today as some smoke moves in from a fire currently burning over in Central Oregon. Now this smoke is going to drop down to the Treasure Valley later on this evening, but we'll see a light amount of smoke here in the Treasure Valley. We'll only see that haze pretty much over in McCall later on today. And then after that, that smoke is going to drop down over into Nevada and Utah. Over the next couple of days, you can expect a slow warm up. Temperature is already warming up into the mid 90s today. We'll likely stay in the mid 90s through the weekend. Expect lots of sunshine this week, and then we're going to turn hot next week as high temperatures jump into the upper 90s on Monday. And we could even see 100 degree highs on both Tuesday and Wednesday. Now for temperatures for the rest of the morning, we're going to be around 64 degrees at 6 a.m. We'll drop down to our low of 62 degrees around 7 a.m. before we warm back up into the mid 60s around 8 a.m., leading to our high today of 95 degrees in Boise. 95 also going to be the high over in Emmett, Ontario and Mountain Home and 94 going to be the high over in Nampa and Caldwell. Then moving up to the mountains, 88 going to be the high over in Idaho City. 84 looking like the high in Sun Valley and 81 going to be the high in McCall today. Thank you, Vasily. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, crews still working to get blazes across Idaho under control. A look at the status of some of our biggest blazes this morning. Plus, even more fun events are coming up across the Treasure Valley this weekend. We talk more with our friends at Kissin in just a bit. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Over 25% of Americans play this sport every year, making it a $4 billion business. The answer, it's bowling. All right, now for today's question. Nearly 60% of people say they do this for their pet if they could. All right, folks, what is it? This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 514. Welcome back. Wildfires raging across Maui and Hawaii's Big Island have claimed the lives of at least 55 people. Aerial photos of the devastation shows entire neighborhoods charred beyond recognition, with block after block of nothing but scorched rubble. The state's governor is now calling on local hotels and residents to help house those displaced. He says recovery efforts are estimated to cost billions and it could take years to rebuild. When you see the full, uh, the full extent of the destruction of Lahaina, it will shock you. It does appear like a bomb and fire went off, if I may. And all of those buildings virtually are going to have to be rebuilt. It will be a new Lahaina. President Joe Biden approving a disaster declaration yesterday, allowing federal aid to help the state. And men, many residents of Lahaina say they had little warning before the wildfire hit their town. According to the Associated Press, many survivors at, at evacuation centers say they didn't hear any warning sirens. One neighbor telling reporters about how he tried to warn others when the fire approached the town. There's a lot of people, more than 36 people that didn't make it. I tried to warn a lot, as many people as I could. We tried. Uh, there was a lot of people like, I think it's just like so chaotic that nobody knew there was no phone connections. And as much as I was trying to save and, and, and let people know there was no options, I just had to go. The AP reports that power and cell phone service had both gone out in the town earlier in the day. Well, let's take a look at fire season here in Idaho. We have two big fires still burning, the Hayden and Elkhorn fires. Let's start with the Hayden fire. That's still just under 24,500 acres. The combination of crew work and natural suppression making for 38% containment this morning. Around 350 personnel still working on that fire, down from 700 last month. No confirmation yet of what sparked the fire. And the Elkhorn fire, now nearly 26,000 acres. A mapping mission yesterday to get the accurate number. It is 36% contained this morning. Areas of the Salmon River are closed, so if you want to enjoy the outdoors over there, check the latest information from the Nez Perce Clearwater National Forest before you go. Well, a tropical storm weakening after doing some major damage in South Korea. You may recall that Typhoon Kanoon 
tore through Japan and other parts of eastern Asia earlier this week. Well, the good news, it may be finally letting up this morning, but not before about 10,000 South Koreans were evacuated before that storm made landfall there. Much of the typhoon's damage was concentrated <clears throat> in the country's southern and eastern regions, where several cities and towns are seeing between 12 to 16 inches of rain. The storm damaging and destroying at least 64 roads and damaging around 50 homes and buildings. At least one death is being reported. Well, let's switch gears because looking ahead, heads up, if you're looking for some delicious food this weekend, Boise Soul Food Festival is hitting the streets. And our friends Chris and Alana of Kissin 92.3 have the details. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 here to tell you about some awesome events happening right here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. Now, Chris, you're a Southern boy, so you're going to like this. Tomorrow going on at Julia Davis Park, uh, the Soul Food Festival. Yeah, I mean, we've got uh, a lot of African-American inspired dishes. Uh, I, if there's cornbread there, I, if there's turnip greens there, I grew up. On turnip greens and let me tell you like anytime you mix bacon and vegetables uh, that's the way to go it's a good day so it starts at 11 o'clock goes to 8 o'clock again at Julia Davis Park uh, check out their website too they have a bunch of different food vendors that are gonna be there as well as uh, different vendors in general so the soul food festival going on tomorrow at Julia Davis Park so I've not eaten breakfast this morning. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I'm very hungry now. I don't know if you just heard my stomach rumbling or not. Yeah, yeah. We were going to add yeah. um, some pictures to it, but we decided to spare you all this morning. But it's yeah. going to be a great event. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you hear stomachs crawling, Definitely not to worry. It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, sunshine coming out this weekend. High pressure building over the state. And right now you can see that it's building all over the Pacific Northwest. We're going to see lots of sunshine this week and also some warmer temperatures as well. We're going to see those high temperatures in the mid 90s throughout much of this weekend, but we'll continue to warm up as we head into next week. We could see some 100 degree highs next week as well. We'll give you a look at the extended forecast in just a second. But let's take a look at future cast first because we're seeing some clear skies this morning. We'll continue to see those clear skies throughout the day today. The only cloud cover we'll really see is over the Oahis and then we'll see some light cloud cover over in McCall in the late afternoon hours but then by the early evening we'll see some clear skies over in McCall and those clear skies will stick around through the evening. Now tomorrow morning we may see some cloud cover move over into McCall that'll be around 10 and 11 o'clock then that cloud cover is going to drop down into the Treasure Valley. We may see some partly cloudy skies from noon till about 2 p.m. on Saturday before those skies start to clear and we should see some clear skies for the rest of Saturday. Now over the next week or so we should see sunshine here in the Treasure Valley high temperatures tomorrow are going to drop down to our average of 93 degrees here in Boise. But then as we head into Sunday, those highs are going to jump back up to 94 degrees and then we'll really start to warm up as we head throughout or as we head throughout next week. We'll see a high of 97 degrees on Monday and then those high temperatures should jump into the hundreds on Tuesday and on Wednesday. We may see a high of 101 degrees in Boise. Then those high temperatures should drop back down into the upper 90s on Thursday. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, we'll see sunny skies all week as well. High temperatures in the low 80s both today and tomorrow. They'll jump into the mid 80s on on Sunday and on Monday, and then they'll jump up into the upper 80s on Tuesday and Wednesday for those high temperatures drop back down into the mid 80s on Thursday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasili. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a spike in summer COVID cases. What experts say you should do to protect yourself and when. Plus, national suicide rates, they're rising. The latest data and why it's causing concern. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 522 on your Friday. Welcome back. We appear to be in a bit of a summer surge for coronavirus cases. So should you get the current vaccine if you're at risk or wait for the new one expected later this fall? Medical reporter Liz Bonus sharing what infectious disease specialists recommend. Hey there, everybody. The newest coronavirus variant emerging right now in the U.S. is known as EG5. It now accounts for just under 20% of cases, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. It's a spinoff of the XBB strain of the Omicron family and is spreading so rapidly and changing, it already has its own spinoff known as EG5.1. Dr. Stephen Blatt told me, well, overall, hospitalizations are considered low in most communities. But, you know, we're running about one to five in our hospital system at any one time. The most recent COVID data tracker shows they are up almost 13 percent. Since Pfizer and other vaccine manufacturers are saying the new vaccine to target the newer variants expected within weeks, 
So I'm, I'm hoping that the manufacturers can ramp it up to be ready by mid-September. The question is, if you're in a higher risk category, should you get the current vaccine available for protection or wait for the next one? Well, I mean, I think that's going to be the question is really who's going to benefit most from the new COVID vaccine. Since the CDC hasn't made its recommendations yet for who should get this newer shot, Dr. Blatt says healthy people should likely wait for the new shot. But to avoid hospitalization, those with compromised immunity, those traveling to other countries, and those who are older may want to consider protection with the current vaccine now available. Keep in mind, it takes about two weeks to build up immunity from this current vaccine. If you do think you need it now due to travel or other concerns, it is suggested you build in time for best protection. A medical reporter, Liz Bonus, back to you. Suicide rates hit an all-time high in the U.S. last year. The CDC posted new numbers showing more than 49,000 people died by suicide in 2022. The data suggests suicides are more common in the U.S. than at any time since World War II. The largest increases were seen in older adults with deaths rising nearly 7% in people ages 45 to 64 and more than 8% in people ages 65 and older. Suicide became the second leading cause of death in adults ages 25 to 44. The CDC is expanding programming to fund more preventative work in different communities. A national crisis line was launched a year ago. Anyone in the U.S. can dial 988 to reach a mental health specialist. And if your loved one is struggling, remember you're not alone. You can always reach out to the Idaho Crisis and Suicide Hotline. Just call or text the number on your screen. That's 988. Someone is always available to talk. And for years, reaching 10,000 steps a day has been the goal, many trying to stay fit and healthy. But now a new study finds walking less than that each day may be enough. The new research finding just 4,000 steps a day will start to lower your risk of dying from any cause. And it doesn't stop there. Researchers also found that just over 2,300 steps a day is enough to benefit your heart and your blood vessels. Up to now, it has not been clear. What is the optimal number of steps when we can see how benefits? The research also shows a 15% decrease in the risk of dying from any cause with an increase of 1,000 steps and 7% reduction in dying from cardiovascular disease with 500 more steps daily. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Well, our back to school drive is almost over. Today is your last day to donate. CBS2, the Salvation Army and CapEd Credit Union, we've combined forces in this effort to prepare, prepare every Treasure Valley student for the new school year. And we need your help. It's so important to provide these school supplies for children that are in need so that they can have an equal advantage in the classroom so that they can show up and feel confident and prepared to take on their school day and to really apply themselves um, to learning, knowing that they have the items they need to succeed. Again, the drive ends today. You can make donations at any CapEd Credit Union branch or Treasure Valley Walmart. We're taking anything a kid could use in the classroom. You can see that list on your screen. If you don't have time to shop, you can also donate money through a link on our website. Salvation Army is hoping to help more than 700 local kids. What we saw was likely the largest natural disaster in Hawaii state history. Coming up on CBS 2 News, the death toll climbs as wildfires burn in Maui. A look at what's next. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. Welcome back. The death toll from the wildfires burning in Hawaii has now increased to 55. According to the Associated Press, over 1,000 structures have been burned down on the island of Maui due to the ongoing fires. Those fires started burning back on Tuesday. Winds from a passing hurricane and a dry summer fueled the fires. This video was taken in Lahaina. Local officials say much of the historic town has now been destroyed. Our community has been devastated. Uh, Lahaina was um, one of our, was our kingdom's capital. We have, we have lost so much. It, it's in ashes. 55 deaths makes this the deadliest U.S. wildfire since the 2018 Camp Fire down in California. Hawaii's Department of Defense says it will take a long time to rebuild. First, go through, try to find as many um, bodies and loved ones, missing personnel as they can. Then next is a little bit of cleanup. Then it's allowing the business and uh, homeowners to go in and grab their effects. So the public's not going to be in allowed in for a long time, and it's going to be a very long process before they can rebuild. 
Yesterday, President Biden approving a disaster declaration for Hawaii, clearing the way for federal assistance. FEMA's administrator will arrive in Hawaii today, as will multiple members of FEMA's disaster relief team. And turning to developing news, a federal court hearing on the protective order that would restrict what President, former President Trump can say about the election conspiracy case against him, that's set for today. This comes as prosecutors say they want January 2nd to be the date former President Trump goes on trial for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. That's just shy of three years after Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol. It's also just shy of two weeks before the first votes will be cast in the Republican race for president. Special counsel Jack Smith's team wants a speedy trial, no more than four to six weeks. Trump's defense team will likely try to slow down the process. And House Republicans say they plan to subpoena members of President Biden's family. It's the latest development in Congressman James Comer's investigation into the Biden's business dealings. For months, the Kentucky congressman has insisted the president is guilty of corruption, and he published a memo outlining millions of dollars in foreign funds made out to Hunter Biden and his associates. Absent, however, was any direct link connecting the president to his son's business. But Comer claims that Hunter Biden has been using his father's name to make profits. Joe Biden was the brand. So that is the first associate that came in implicated Joe Biden as being the reason they were getting this money. And the money is from bad people. The president denying any involvement in his son's business and dismisses Comer's prom as a smear campaign. And back here at home, the Idaho law meant to make transgender students use the bathroom corresponding with their biological gender on pause just before the start of the school year. Idaho Capital Sun reporting the U.S. District Court temporarily blocking the enforcement of Senate Bill 1100 that took effect back on July 1st until a ruling happens. The law also allows students to sue the school if they come upon a transgender student in the bathroom. But for now, schools must continue on as they did last year. The case bringing about this temporary block allowing continued bathroom choice claims the law violates civil rights. The next hearing on this is scheduled for September 13th. And Idaho General, Attorney General Raul Labrador now has until 4 o'clock this afternoon to rewrite the titles of the open primaries initiative. The case was over how a ballot initiative would be described. The Idaho Supreme Court ruling partially in favor of the petitioners in the case against Labrador. The petitioners, Idaho, Idahoans for open primaries, arguing the title written by Labrador was deceptive. The court agrees, saying the short and general ballot title failed to comply with Idaho code. The petitioners, however, will not be granted extra time to obtain signatures for this initiative. That request was denied. And Bruce Newcomb, former Republican Speaker of the Idaho House of Representatives, says, quote, Today's decision is a major victory for the voters of Idaho. Too many of our elected officials are handpicked by special interest groups, not by the voters they're supposed to serve. The open primaries initiative will change that by giving all voters, regardless of party affiliation, the right to vote in primary elections, end quote. You can read more about this case and the open primaries initiative on IdahoNews.com. Well, officials are investigating an explosion down in Austin, Texas. It went off in a medical center parking garage. Police there now arresting a suspect after evacuating neighbors at an apartment complex. They say they found an object and called the bomb squad. It's a little concerning. It's not every day in Austin, Texas, you hear that there's like a bomb threat, you know, someplace yeah. in like a, a gated community or a community like this. The suspect now charged with third degree felony components of explosives. Well, happening today, back here at home, the brand new Lego store opening in Idaho today. You can find it at the Village in Meridian. And to celebrate, there'll be in-store events, including free giveaways and building activities all month long. If you visit today through Sunday, you can even get a free iHeart Lego store tile. So get there soon. And also happening today, hundreds of professional and amateur BMX riders from across the world are here in the state. It's the USA BMX Gem State Nationals. Friday is the start of this three-day event. It'll be at Caldwell BMX. Those races begin today at 1.30 p.m., at 9 a.m. on Saturday and 8 a.m. on Sunday. Keep in mind, parking is just $10 per day. And the Western Idaho Fair starting later this month. And this year, you can get in free to the fair during the first four hours. That's because it's CBS2 Day at the Fair. It's Friday, August 18th from noon to 4. Admission is on us. 
All we ask is that you bring a donation, a couple cans of food to give to the Idaho Food Bank. Seed and Garden Idaho is sponsored by Franz Witte. If you're looking to bear some fruit this summer, listen up. Ashley's talking to our friends over at Franz Witte about some pretty sweet plants. Hey everyone, we're back at Franz Witte this week, and this week we're talking about fruit trees with our expert Judina. And so, Judina, to start, what kind of citrus trees do you sell here at Franz Witte? So we carry pretty great variety of citrus trees. We carry some lemons, limes, uh, some mandarins, and some Ooh. different oranges, which is fun. We also do carry some fig trees and some pomegranate shrubs as well. Oh, yum. So here in Idaho, how can you best care for your citrus trees, especially in winter? Yes, that's a very good point. So <laughs> all of these trees are not winter hardy here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's best to keep them indoors around 65 degrees is what uh -huh. they like. However, you can have them as a patio plant in the summer. Um, oh. Just make sh making sure to bring it inside when the night temperatures start getting around 50 and 60 degrees. Okay, good to keep in mind. And I see we have some fertilizer. What? What's best to keep in mind when fertilizing your citrus tree? Yeah, so the best time to fertilize your citrus trees are when they're just starting to produce flowers and fruit. Um, it can sometimes be, I guess, the early spring. Um, the best fertilizer to look for is specifically anything that says fruit tree. Uh, we do have this citrus and fruit tree plant food, which is nice. I think you just mix in like a tablespoon per six inches for the size of your pot. So it okay. makes it nice and easy. You just sprinkle it on top and then as you water it, uh, the fertilizer will seep down into the soil. And speaking of the size of your pot, I see we have quite a f quite a bit of variety here. How big oh, can absolutely. your citrus, free citrus tree get? They can get uh, Pretty large, indoor speaking, um, probably not bigger though than around six feet. You can, however, Ooh. prune them to keep them a bit smaller. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, they get to being a good size indoors when taken really good care of. Mm. And when it comes to pruning and watering, what, what do people need to know? Um, so pruning just, I think it's the lower branches that produce fruit and then the taller branches are the leaves or the foliage <laughs> for the, uh, photosynthesizing. Um, so it's probably better not to trim so many of the lower branches because those will be your fruit producing branches. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, they're pretty fine to keep trimmed back so that way they won't get too big. Um, watering, they do like to dry down a bit between waterings, although Ooh. they might require just a little bit more moisture in the soil when they are producing fruit just because more of that water is going into the produce. Well, thank you, Judina. A lot of important stuff to keep in mind when you're getting your citrus trees. And when you want to pick yours out, come check out Franz Witte. And if you have any questions, ask their experts. They can be sure to help you. It's on the corner of Chinden and 11th Avenue North, home of the Pink Flamingos. Well, folks, it's set to be a sunny day and a sunny week here in the Treasure Valley. We'll be seeing clear skies all day today. Now, wind speeds will be quite light throughout the morning. As we head to the afternoon, those winds will start to pick up, and we'll see a top wind speed of 11 miles an hour both at 5 and 6 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll reach the upper 70s around 11 o'clock, jump into the upper 80s around 2 p.m., leading to a high today of 95 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive sometime between 5 and 6 p.m. today. Now, if you're heading out the door anytime soon, temperature is sitting at 54 degrees over in McCall, 58 degrees in temperature right now in Caldwell, 64 degrees the temperature here in Boise. Then moving up to the mountains, they're sitting right around average this morning with a temperature of 46 degrees over in McCall. Now high pressure has overtaken much of the west coast. This is what's going to bring out that sunshine today and that sunshine all week as this high pressure is expected to stick around throughout the week. Now we are going to see some smoke moving up into the mountains today. That smoke coming from a fire currently burning over in central Oregon. That smoke may drop down into the Treasure Valley, but it's not going to stick around for long. It should drop down into Nevada and Utah as we head into Saturday. Saturday night. Now, taking a look at the next couple of days, a slow warm up has already begun. Temperatures warming up into the mid 90s today. We'll likely stay in the mid 90s through the weekend. Expect lots of sunshine and we'll turn hot next week as high temperatures jump up into the upper 90s on Monday. We could see 100 degree highs on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, temperatures for the rest of the morning will drop down to our low with 62 degrees around 7 a.m. before jumping back into the mid 60s around 8 a.m., leading to a high today of 95 degrees in Boise. 95 also going to be the high in Mountain Home, Emmett, and over in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains 81 degrees in McCall. Thank you, Vasily. It's now time for our question of the day. The question nearly 60% of people say they do this for their pet if they could. 
Well, I would have my dog ride on a skateboard because I love oh, those videos on Instagram. I like love I used that. to have an English bulldog oh, too, and that's all the dogs I see. But oh. now I have a French bulldog, and she she doesn't really love doing that kind of thing. So <laughs> if I could, I would get them on a skateboard. But what yeah. do you think? More of a napper, I'm thinking. Yeah. A French bulldog. Um, I'm not. I would do anything for my I, dog. That's what I was. I would do anything for my little Lola. It's a difficult one. Do you have a guess? I don't think um, I do right now. I would bring her to work every day. Oh yeah. I would love that. Well, I would take her everywhere, I really. Encourage but I mean, <laughs> we'll we'll let, narrow it down to work every day. I like that. Are we? Do we want a new coworker, a new reporter at CBS too? Love Lola to. can jump on. Lola, you know. All right, let's see what folks at home have to say this morning. Steve says, "Take him to work." Yep, he agrees with you guys. Go into the dogs. All right, Christy says, "Teaching them to talk." Oh, absolutely. Oh, be fun to know what's that. on their mind. Oh. Steven says, "Buying them a friend." Hey, why oh, not? You know, two's better than one. The more the merrier. They can't get lonely. Yeah, nope, not I mean, at all. There's ways to justify. <laughs> I love this. All right, folks, if you think you know the answer, you still have an hour and 15 minutes to get those guesses in. We'll read more of your answers throughout the morning and reveal the actual answer to the question at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News This Morning, we're hearing from survivors in the Maui wildfire. The disaster declaration now going into effect. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. For thousands of Hawaiians, everything they own and know is now gone. The Lahaina community is burnt to the ground after wildfires spread quickly thanks to strong winds and dry conditions. Dozens are now dead. Many of those who got out had to leave everything behind, even their pets. Others were separated and can't reconnect yet because phone communications are down and there's no gasoline available. Lahaina looks like a bomb went off. There is nothing left. The entire village has been turned into rubble. It's a devastating sight to see. Everything that we own, you know, in all my 50 years of life is completely burned to the ground. Um, the home is gone. Survivors are seeking shelter elsewhere on Maui. Others have gone to Oahu to shelter in the Honolulu Convention Center. President Biden has authorized a major disaster declaration and FEMA is assisting. The winds have died down, which is helping in the firefight. And turning to developing news this morning, new Labor Department data showing consumer inflation rose slightly in July. 2% annual inflation is considered normal. The current rate now sitting at 3.2%. It breaks a year long stretch of decline, which economists expected. Looking at what's happening right now, this month and this past quarter, inflation has continued to cool. Some items that are getting cheaper are used cars, trucks, and airfare. Meantime, more expensive car insurance contributing to monthly inflation increase of 2%. But the biggest contributing factor, again, is the cost of housing. Well, as the U.S. battles inflation, China's economy charting into deflation territory as their consumer prices are dipping. Didi Gatton explains what this all means and the potential impact on the U.S. After constantly hearing about inflation, deflation may sound good, keyword sound, but it's a lot more complicated. The opposite of inflation, of course, deflation is when there's a general decrease in prices. Financial experts say it may not necessarily be problematic, but when it's because there's a drop in demand, it can be. Now with China, the world's second largest economy, experiencing a decline in consumer prices and edging into deflation territory, there are fears over the impact on the U.S. Normally, markets don't like uh, uncertainty. They're a, a large uh, trading partner in the U.S. Um, I suppose the silver lining there is uh, Chinese goods could become less expensive to American consumers, uh, and that might help our inflation a little bit or help our prices from going up as much. But uh, if you were a producer in the U.S. and competed with a Chinese a uh, producer, you say, wow, they're going to be able to sell for even less. That doesn't sound very good. That sounds like they're going to have the upper hand. Experts say producer prices have been falling in China since October. The youth unemployment rate is high and there are significant issues in the housing market. All of these factors fuel questions over where their economy is headed. Reporting for the National Desk, I'm Didi Gatton. The Writers Guild of America and Hollywood Studios are having a sit down today to continue their negotiations. The goal is to try to end the ongoing strike that's now put a halt to your favorite stars of the screen. 
For more than 100 days, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers and the Writers Guild of America have not seen eye to eye on various issues. Those include the use or non-use of artificial intelligence and higher salaries, higher salaries and better residuals from streaming platforms. This is a wake up call not only for the entertainment industry, but for every industry to really look at that and say we are not being paid fairly. We are not being paid a fair share of the pie for what we are contributing to these industries. The ongoing standoff is causing havoc for film and TV production schedules, including the 75th Emmy Awards ceremony scheduled for September that's now been postponed to January of 2024. This writer's strike has already outlasted the standoff that took place back in 2007 and part of 2008. The longest writer's strike so far happened back in 1988 when they picketed for 154 days. And the CEO of UPS saying on a quarterly earnings call that the company's drivers, they'll earn an average of $170,000 in annual pay and benefits at the end of a five-year contract agreement. The Teamsters Union negotiated with the carrier last month to avoid a strike and secure a new contract for 340,000 union employees. Well, looking ahead, it's rodeo season, and if you haven't already dusted off your boots, Alana and Chris of Kissin 92.3, they have a reason for you to break out your dance moves. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 here to tell you about some awesome events happening in the Treasure Valley uh, during rodeo time. Of course, Caldwell Night Rodeo. We got the kickoff party happening tomorrow at Indian Creek Plaza. And I love the name of this, Boots, Buckles, and Brew. So you got to <laughs> wear your boots, you got to wear your buckles. Yeah. And uh, drink some brew. Enjoy some brew. Like, what more do you need now? Kissing 92.3. We're going to be hanging out there tomorrow. It is going down from uh, 6 until 10 at Indian Creek Plaza with a little barn dance action, Ooh. too. So we have seen your swing dancing in action at so many different concerts. So we expect good things out there tomorrow at Indian Creek Plaza. Should be a good time. I just yeah. loved last year the Caldwell Night Rodeo. I went two different days last year and had a blast. It kicks mm -hmm. off the 15th, so get out there and enjoy it. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. And as far yeah. as at least the weather heading into this weekend, mm -hmm. looking pretty good. Yeah, it looks great. great. We're going to see lots of sunshine this week as high pressure continues to build over not only the Gem State, but the entire Pacific Northwest. Now we're going to see this high pressure stick around for the next week or so, bringing out lots of sunshine and also warming up temperatures. High temperatures this weekend are going to be in the mid 90s, but we'll jump up into the upper 90s on Monday. Then we may even see 100 degree highs on Tuesday and Wednesday. As for today, we're going to see those highs in the mid 90s and we'll see clear skies throughout the morning. As we head into the afternoon, we may see some light cloud cover near McCall and some cloud cover over the Owyhees, but then by the evening we'll see clear skies all around the Gem State. Now tomorrow morning we'll start to see some cloud cover move over McCall. That'll be from 10 till about 1130. Then that cloud cover is going to drop down into the Treasure Valley. We may see some partly cloudy skies here in Boise from noon till about 230 and then those clouds are going to start to clear and we'll likely see clear skies heading into Saturday evening. Now moving to the seven day forecast, high temperature is going to drop down to our average of 93 degrees here in Boise tomorrow but we'll likely see some 95 degree highs around the Treasure Valley as well. Those high temperatures are going to stay in the mid 90s as we head into Sunday. Then by Monday, those high temperatures are going to jump up into the upper 90s and then we'll see those 100 degree highs on both Tuesday and Wednesday. Could see a high of 101 degrees here in Boise on Wednesday. Then by Thursday, those high temperatures are going to drop back down to the upper 90s. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll see those high temperatures in the low 80s both today and tomorrow. They'll jump up into the mid 80s on Sunday and on Monday. And then by Tuesday and Wednesday, those high temperatures are going to jump back up into the the upper 80s before they drop down into the mid 80s on Thursday in the mountains. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Russia launching its first mission to the moon in decades. The latest on the Kremlin's crew who just touched down. Welcome back. CBS 2 is your home for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And this year we have 50 balloons that will lift off from Ann Morrison Park. I love, I love the unique designs, the patriotic designs. It really, really reinforces America. And again, who doesn't love the Coca-Cola balloon? The Balloon Classic beginning with Cap Ed Kids Day. That's Wednesday, August 30th. It continues through Labor Day weekend with balloons taking off each morning. On Friday night, there's Night Glow. That's a special event that families will remember forever. 
And we hope you'll join us for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic from Ann Morrison Park. Our coverage already underway. You can find it on IdahoNews.com. While well, Russia is sending a lunar lander to the moon, the spacecraft successfully launched last night. It's Russia's first mission to the moon since 1976. The Luna 25 is expected to reach the south pole of the moon in about two weeks. India has a craft targeting the same area at the same time. No spacecraft has landed there smoothly. NASA says the real space race is between the U.S. and China, which both have plans to send manned missions there as well. And if indeed we find water in abundance there that could be utilized for future crews and spacecraft, uh, we want to make sure that that's available to all, not just the one that's claiming it. 28 countries have signed on to the Artemis Accords, a pact underscoring the peaceful and cooperative use of space. NASA wishes Russia well on this mission. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, dozens dead after wildfire tears through West Maui. What officials are saying this morning as neighbors return to search the rubble. Plus, crews still working to get blazes across Idaho under control. A look at the status of some of our biggest blazes this morning. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. We have your latest headlines at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. I'm Vasily Varlamos. High pressure is continuing to build over the state, bringing sunshine and warmer temperatures. I'll let you know when we may see 100 degree highs coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter and coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a federal court set to decide how much the former president can share about the January 6th case. When Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. Coming up this morning, you've only got a few hours left to help Idaho students get off on the right foot where you can drop off school supplies. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza on this Friday morning. It's August 11th, 2023. We'll get to your weather in just a bit, but first. We saw young men on bicycles riding through Lahaina they also uh, had much loss to share. They lost their houses and they don't know where to turn. Hawaii's Governor Josh Green saying it looks like a bomb went off in Lahaina after fires destroyed the town. 55 people are now dead in the blaze and that toll could rise. Green says it is the biggest natural disaster in Hawaii since the 1960 tsunami killed 61 people on the Big Island. Stay tuned. We'll be keeping you updated on the conditions there this morning. For the latest, you can always head to IdahoNews.com. And we're learning more now about the Utah man who died in a shootout with the FBI. Craig Robertson's family released a statement decrying his death as senseless. In it, they described the 75-year-old as a harmless churchgoer who was simply practicing his First Amendment rights on social media. The FBI had issued an arrest warrant for Robertson after he made threats online referencing the president's trip to Utah. They reportedly began their investigation back in March after his posts were flagged on Donald Trump's social media site, Truth Social. And Niger's new military leaders threatening to kill their deposed president if neighboring countries intervene. The warning coming as a group of West African nations have agreed to mobilize troops in response to the military takeover. Their president spearheading that effort. He says the use of force will be a last resort and that the group is exploring other options. They previously gave the country a week to reinstate their president. That deadline passing on Sunday with no signs of intervention. Well, now taking a closer look at what officials are calling the largest natural disaster in Hawaii's history. 
An unknown number of people are missing this morning as crews continue to search for survivors. Neighbors who evacuated now coming back home to find nothing but ashes. It's still very, very hazardous in the burn areas. Things are falling every minute around us. Shelters, they've been set up to accommodate the thousands who are now displaced. The governor saying it'll take several years and billions of dollars to rebuild. And as of yesterday, President Biden approving a disaster declaration for Hawaii, clearing the way for federal assistance. FEMA's administrator set to arrive in Hawaii today, as multiple members of FEMA's disaster relief team will as well. The administrator noting the situation poses some serious challenges. Limited in our ability to where we can put people because it is isolated as an island. And so we're going to work closely with the state to understand what resources they need and what types of um, create creative solutions we're going to have to bring in to help this community in the interim recovery, but more importantly, in their long term recovery. Deanne Criswell says Maui's situation is similar to that of Boulder, Colorado in 2021, where an entire community burned to the ground as fire was spread by excessive winds. Thousands have been displaced by the Maui wildfires and are receiving assistance. And turning now to developing news, a federal court hearing on the protective order that would restrict what former President Donald Trump can say about the election conspiracy case against him is set for today. Trump's lawyers argued the order violates his First Amendment rights. It comes as prosecutors say they want January 2nd to be the date that former President Trump goes on trial for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. That's just shy of three years after Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol. It's also just shy of two weeks before the first votes will be cast in the Republican race for president. Special counsel Jack Smith's team wants a speedy trial, no more than four to six weeks. Trump's defense team will likely try to slow down that process. And House Republicans say they plan to subpoena members of President Biden's family. It's the latest development in Congressman James Comer's investigation into the Biden's business dealings. For months, the Kentucky congressman has insisted the president is guilty of corruption, and he published a memo outlining millions of dollars in foreign funds made out to Hunter Biden and his associates. Absent, however, was any direct link connecting the president to his son's business, but Comer claims that Hunter Biden has been using his father's name to make profits. Joe Biden was the brand, so that is the first associate that came in implicated Joe Biden as being the reason they were getting this money, and the money is from bad people. The president denies any involvement in his son's business and dismisses Comer's probe as a smear campaign. And back here at home, the Idaho law meant to make transgender students use the bathroom corresponding with their biological gender on pause just before the start of the school year. Idaho Capital Sun reporting the U.S. District Court temporarily blocking the enforcement of Senate Bill 1100 that took effect back on July 1st until a ruling happens. The law also allows students to sue the school if they come upon a transgender student in a bathroom. But for now, schools must continue on as they did last year. The case bringing about this temporary block allowing continued bathroom choice claims the law violates civil rights. The next hearing on this is scheduled for September 13th. And Idaho Attorney General Raul Labrador now has until 4 o'clock this afternoon to rewrite the titles of the Open Primaries Initiative. The case was over how a ballot initiative would be described. The Idaho Supreme Court ruling partially in favor of the petitioners in the case against Labrador. The petitioners, Idahoans for Open Primaries, arguing that the title written by Labrador was deceptive. The court agrees, saying the short and general ballot titles failed to comply with the Idaho Code. The petitioners, however, will not be granted extra time to obtain signatures for the initiative. That request was denied. And Bruce Newcomb, former Republican Speaker of the Idaho House of Representatives, says, quote, Today's decision is a major victory for the voters of Idaho. Too many of our elected officials are handpicked by spe special interest groups, not by the voters they're supposed to serve. The open primaries initiative will change that by giving all voters, regardless of party affiliation, the right to vote in primary elections, end quote. You can read more about this case and the open primaries initiative on IdahoNews.com. Happening today, the brand new Lego store opening in Idaho. You can find it at the Village at Meridian.
And to celebrate, there'll be in-store events, including free giveaways and building activities all month long. If you visit today through Sunday, though, you can get a free iHeart Lego store tile. Get there soon. And also happening today, the USA's BMX Gem State Nationals. Hundreds of professional and amateur BMX riders from across the world are here in the Treasure Valley. Today, starting the three-day event, it'll be at Caldwell BMX. Those races start today at 1.30 p.m., 9 a.m. Saturday, and 8 a.m. on Sunday. Keep in mind, parking is just $10 per day. And the Western Idaho Fair is starting later this month, and this year you can get in free to the fair during the first four hours. That's CBS2 Day at the Fair. It's Friday, August 18th from noon to 4. Admission is on us. All we ask is that you bring a donation, a couple cans of food to give to the Idaho Food Bank. And the weekend is here, and if you're looking to check out some local arts and crafts, our friends Alana and Chris of Kissin 92.3 have an event you don't want to miss out on. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 here to tell you about some of the awesome events happening right here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. And if you are a fan of the arts, Nampa is having a festival of the arts, Lakeview Park, tomorrow from 9 to 6, and then Sunday from 10 to 3. Yeah, so uh, there's lots of cool things that you're going to be able to find with local artists, jewelry, uh, painting, sculptures. Now, Alana, whimsical yard art is said to be on hand at the Nampa Festival of the Arts. Do you think that's going to be like gnomes? and stuff it could be or like a yard flamingo with a top hat if i swear if there is a yard flamingo <laughs> with a top hat at the Nampa, <laughs> Nampa festival of the arts it's coming home with me it's our new mascot well, if you're heading out to the Nampa Festival of Arts this weekend, you're going to be enjoying some sunshine, much like we're going to enjoy today. Now, wind speeds will be quite light throughout the morning. We'll start to see them pick up in the afternoon, and we'll see a top wind speed of 11 miles an hour, both at 5 and 6 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll reach the upper 70s around 11 o'clock, jumping to the upper 80s around 2 p.m., leading to a high today of 94 to 95 degrees, expected to arrive sometime between 5 and 6 p.m. And if you're heading out the door anytime soon, temperatures sitting in the low 60s right now over in Ontario and Caldwell, 57 degrees the temperature right now in Nampa and Mountain Home and 64 degrees the temperature right now over in Boise then moving up to the mountains right now they're sitting right around average with a temperature of 45 over in McCall now we are seeing that high pressure all around the Pacific Northwest and all around the West Coast in general this is what's going to bring out that sunshine over the next week or so now we are going to see some smoke pouring into the West Central Mountains that smoke coming from a wildfire currently burning over in Central Oregon now that smoke is going to drop down and possibly impact us here in the Treasure Valley on Saturday morning but then that is going to drop down into northern Nevada and northern Utah as we head into Sunday morning. Now over the next couple of days, a slow warm-up has already begun. High temperatures in the mid-90s today will likely stay in the mid-90s through next weekend or through this weekend, but then we'll get hot next week. Now as for temperatures for the rest of the morning, we are going to drop down to our low of 62 degrees around 7 a.m. before jumping back up into the mid-60s as we head into 8 a.m., leading to our high today of 95 degrees in Boise. 95 also going to be the high in Mountain Home, Emmett, and Ontario. And moving up to the mountains, 81 going to be the high in McCall. Call. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there this Friday morning, let's check in with Debbie McAllister at our drive. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. We seem to be off to a great start for your Friday morning. Right now we have just a little bit of extra traffic on Overland Road, westbound between Eagle Road and Meridian Road. And there seems to be a little bit of extra traffic on Meridian Road between the, just before you get to Overland Road, all the way up to the freeway. And that's northbound. Other than that, things are looking great for your Friday morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your Friday morning, be sure to start it off with News Talk 670 KBOI or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, crews still working to get blazes across Idaho under control. A look at the status of some of our biggest fires this morning. Plus, even more fun events coming up across the Treasure Valley this weekend. We talk more with our friends at Kiss It in just a bit. And hey, it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Over 25% of Americans play this sport every year, making it a $4 billion business. Great guesses. The answer, though, was bowling. All right, now for today's question. Nearly 60% of people say they'd do this for their pet if they could. All right, folks, what do you think it is?
This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 6.15. Welcome back. Wildfires raging across Maui and Hawaii's Big Island have claimed the lives of at least 55 people. Aerial photos of the devastation show entire neighborhoods charred beyond recognition with block after block of nothing but scorched rubble. The state's governor is now calling on local hotels and residents to help house those who are displaced. He says recovery efforts are estimated to cost billions of dollars and it could take years to rebuild. When you see the full, uh, the full extent of the destruction of Lahaina, it will shock you. It does appear like a bomb and fire went off, if I may. And all of those buildings virtually are going to have to be rebuilt. It will be a new Lahaina. President Joe Biden approved a disaster declaration yesterday, allowing federal aid to help the state. And many residents of Lahaina say they had little warning before the wildfire hit their town. According to the Associated Press, many survivors at evacuation centers say they didn't hear any warning sirens. One neighbor telling reporters about how he tried to warn others when the fire approached the town. There's a lot of people, more than 36 people that didn't make it. I tried to warn a lot, as many people as I could. We tried. Uh, there was a lot of uh, people like, I think it was just like so chaotic that nobody knew there was no phone connections. And as much as I was trying to save and, and, and let people know there was no options, I just had to go. The AP reports that power and cell phone service had both gone out in the town earlier in the day. Well, now let's turn to wildfire season here in Idaho. We have two big fires that are still burning in the state, the Hayden and Elkhorn fires. Let's start with the Hayden fire. That's still just under 24 and a half thousand acres. The combination of crew work and natural suppression making for 83% containment this morning. Around 350 personnel still working on that fire. That's down from 700 last month. We have no confirmation on what sparked the fire. And the Elkhorn fire has now burned nearly 26,000 acres. A mapping mission got accurate numbers. It is now 36% contained. Areas of the Salmon River, they're closed. So if you do want to enjoy the outdoors over there, check the latest information from the Nez Perce Clearwater National Forest before you head out. And looking ahead, heads up, if you're looking for some delicious food this weekend, it's Boise Soul Food Festival. They're hitting the streets. And our friends Alana and Chris of Kissin 92.3 have the details. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kissin 92.3 here to tell you about some awesome events happening right here in the Treasure Valley this weekend. Now, Chris, you're a Southern boy, so you're going to like this. Tomorrow going on at Julia Davis Park, uh, the Soul Food Festival. Yeah, I mean, we've got uh, a lot of African-American inspired dishes. Uh, I, if there's cornbread there, I, if there's turnip greens there, I grew up on turnip greens. And let me tell you, like anytime you mix bacon and vegetables, uh, that's the way to go. It's a good day. So it starts at 11 o'clock, goes to 8 o'clock again at Julia Davis Park. Uh, check out their website too. They have a bunch of different food vendors that are going to be there as well as uh, different vendors in general. So the Soul Food Festival going on tomorrow at Julia Davis Park. Yeah, make sure you come hungry. It looks yeah. really good. Yeah, speaking yeah. of hungry, have not had breakfast this morning, mm -hmm. so that did not help me out at all. Yeah. I'm definitely going to check that out this weekend. Yeah. Going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. looking like this weekend shaping up to be a beautiful mm -hmm. one. Yeah, going to be a beautiful weekend, a beautiful week in general. We should see lots of sunshine this week. High temperatures are going to also start to warm up next week. We'll be in the upper 90s on Monday for possibly jumping to the hundreds on both Tuesday and on Wednesday. Now, this is all thanks to high pressure that has been building over the past few days. It's going to continue to build through the weekend, which is going to have those temperatures getting hotter and hotter as we head into next week. But as for future casts, we'll see sunshine throughout the morning. As we head to the afternoon, we may start to see some cloud cover develop near, near McCall and over in the Oahis. But in general, we're going to see clear skies throughout the day here in the Gem State. Then as we head into tomorrow, we'll see some cloud cover pass over McCall. That'll be between the hours of 10 o'clock till about 1130. And then those clouds are going to drop down into the Treasure Valley. May see cloud cover anywhere between 12 till about 230 p.m. And then we'll see clear skies after 
that on Saturday. Now here's a look at the seven day forecast. High temperature is here in Boise going to drop down to our average of 93 degrees. We'll jump a degree up to 94 degrees tomorrow and then we'll really start to warm up as we get into next week. We'll see a high of 97 degrees on Monday. Then those highs will jump up to 100 degrees on Tuesday before jumping up to 101 on Wednesday. Then those highs should drop back down into the upper 90s as we head into Thursday. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, their high temperature is in the low 80s today. They'll jump into the mid 80s on Sunday and Monday. For those high temperatures, warm up into the upper 80s on Tuesday and Wednesday. Then those highs should drop back down into the mid 80s on Thursday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 620 this morning, let's check in with Debbie McAllister for a traffic update. Good morning. Well, our commute is off to a great start. We do have a little bit of extra traffic on northbound Eagle Road between Fairview and Eustick. And we're starting to see a little bit of heavier traffic on Chinden eastbound between Star Road and Highway 16. And it looks like some people are starting to head out of town on Highway 55, starting to see a little bit of extra traffic headed north on Highway 55. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. When you hop in the car and start your Friday morning, start it off with some team traffic updates to stay up to date on your commute. You can get those on KBOI. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a spike in summer COVID cases. What experts say you should do to protect yourself and when. Plus, national suicide rates, they're rising. The latest data and why it's causing concern. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 624 on your Friday. Welcome back. We appear to be in a bit of a summer search for coronavirus cases. So should you get the current vaccine if you're at risk or wait for the new one that's expected later this fall? Medical reporter Liz Bonus sharing what infectious disease specialists are recommending. Hey there, everybody. The newest coronavirus variant emerging right now in the U.S. is known as EG5. It now accounts for just under 20% of cases, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. It's a spin-off of the XBB strain of the Omicron family and is spreading so rapidly and changing, it already has its own spin-off known as EG5.1. Dr. Stephen Blatt told me, well, overall, hospitalizations are considered low in most communities. But, you know, we're running about one to five in our hospital system at any one time. The most recent COVID data tracker shows they are up almost 13%. Since Pfizer and other vaccine manufacturers are saying the new vaccine to target the newer variants expected within weeks. So I'm, I'm hoping that the manufacturers can ramp it up to be ready by mid-September. The question is, if you're in a higher risk category, should you get the current vaccine available for protection or wait for the next one? Well, I mean, I think that's going to be the question is really who's going to benefit most from the new COVID vaccine. Since the CDC hasn't made its recommendations yet for who should get this newer shot, Dr. Blatt says healthy people should likely wait for the new shot. But to avoid hospitalization, those with compromised immunity, those traveling to other countries, and those who are older may want to consider protection with the current vaccine now available. Keep in mind, it takes about two weeks to build up immunity from this current vaccine. If you do think you need it now due to travel or other concerns, it is suggested you build in time for best protection. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus, back to you. Suicide rates hit an all-time high in the U.S. last year. The CDC posted new numbers showing more than 49,000 people died by suicide in 2022. The data suggests suicides are more common in the U.S. than at any time since World War II. The largest increases were seen in older adults, with deaths rising nearly 7 percent in people ages 45 to 64 and more than 8 percent in people ages 65 and older. Suicide became the second leading cause of death in adults ages 25 to 44. And if you or a loved one is struggling, remember you are not alone. You can always reach out to the Idaho Crisis and Suicide Hotline. Just call or text the number on your screen. It's 988. Someone is always available to talk. The CBS2 Back to School Drive is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. 
The CBS 2 back to school drive is almost over. Today is our final day to donate. CBS 2, the Salvation Army and CapEd Credit Union combining forces into this effort to prepare every Treasure Valley student for the new school year. And we need your help. Now again, that drive ending today, you can make donations at any CapEd Credit Union branch or Treasure Valley Walmart. We're trying to help over 700 local kids. What we saw was likely the largest natural disaster in Hawaii's state history. Coming up on CBS 2 News, the death toll climbs as wildfires burn in Maui. And don't forget about our question of the day. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. The death toll from the wildfires burning in Hawaii has now increased to 55. According to the Associated Press, over 1,000 structures have now been burned down on the island of Maui due to the ongoing fires. Those fires started back on Tuesday. Winds from a passing hurricane and a dry summer fueled these fires. This video was taken in Lahaina. Local officials say much of the historic town has now been destroyed. Our community has been devastated. Uh, Lahaina was um, one of our, was our kingdom's capital. We have, we have lost so much, it, it's in ashes. 55 deaths makes this the deadliest U.S. wildfire since the 2018 campfire in California. Hawaii's Department of Defense says it will take a long time to rebuild. First, go through, try to find as many um, bodies and loved ones, missing personnel as they can. Then next is a little bit of cleanup. Then it's allowing the business and uh, homeowners to go in and grab their effects. So the public's not going to be in, allowed in for a long time, and it's going to be a very long process before they can rebuild. Yesterday, President Biden approving a disaster declaration for Hawaii, clearing the way for federal assistance. FEMA's administrator will arrive in Hawaii today, as will multiple members of FEMA's disaster relief team. And turning now to developing news, a federal court hearing on the protective order that would restrict what former President Trump can say about the election conspiracy case against him is set for today. It comes as prosecutors say they want January 2nd to be the date that former President Trump goes on trial for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. That's just shy of three years after Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol. It's also just shy of two weeks before the first votes will be cast in the Republican race for president. Special counsel Jack Smith's team wants a speedy trial no more than four to six weeks. Trump's defense team will likely try and slow down the process. And House Republicans say they plan to subpoena members of President Biden's family. It's the latest development in Congressman Jack, Jack Comer's investigation into the Biden's business dealings. For months, the Kentucky congressman has insisted the president is guilty of corruption, and he published a memo outlining millions of dollars in foreign funds made out to Hunter Biden and his associates. Absent, however, was any direct link connecting the president to his son's business. But Comer claims that Hunter Biden has been using his father's name to make profits. Joe Biden was the brand. So that is the first associate that came in implicated Joe Biden as being the reason they were getting this money, and the money is from bad people. The president denies any involvement in his son's business and dismisses Comer's probe as a smear campaign. And back here at home, the Idaho law meant to make transgender students use the bathroom corresponding with their biological gender on pause just before the school year starts. The Idaho Capital Sun reporting the U.S. District Court temporarily blocking the enforcement of Senate Bill 1100 that took effect back on July 1st until a ruling happens. The law also allows students to sue the school if they come upon a transgender student in the bathroom. But for now, schools must continue on as they did last year. The case bringing about this temporary block allowing continued bathroom choice claims the law violates civil rights. The next hearing on this is set for September 13th. And Idaho Attorney General Raul Labrador now has until 4 o'clock this afternoon to rewrite the titles of the Open Primaries Initiative. The case was over how a ballot initiative would be described. The Idaho Supreme Court ruling partially in favor of the petitioners in the case against Labrador. The petitioners, Idahoans for Open Primaries, arguing the title written by Labrador was deceptive. The court agrees, saying the short and general ballot titles failed to comply with Idaho code. The petitioners, however, will not be granted extra time to obtain signatures for the initiative 
That request was denied. And Bruce Newcomb, former Republican Speaker of the Idaho House of Representatives, says, quote, Today's decision is a major victory for the voters of Idaho. Too many of our elected officials are handpicked by special interest groups, not by the voters they're supposed to serve. The Open Primaries Initiative will change that by giving all voters, regardless of party affiliation, the right to vote in primary elections, end quote. You can read more about this case and the Open Primaries Initiative on IdahoNews.com. Seed and Garden Idaho is sponsored by Franz Witte. Well, if you're hoping to bear some fruit this summer, listen up. Ashley talked with our friends over at Franz Witte about some pretty sweet plants. Hey everyone, we're back at Franz Witte this week, and this week we're talking about fruit trees with our expert Judina. And so, Judina, to start, what kind of citrus trees do you sell here at Franz Witte? So we carry pretty great variety of citrus trees. We carry some lemons, limes, uh, some mandarins, and some Ooh. different oranges, which is fun. We also do carry some fig trees and some pomegranate shrubs as well. Oh, yum. So here in Idaho, how can you best care for your citrus trees, especially in winter? Yes, that's a very good point. So all of these trees are not winter hardy here. Mm -hmm. um, so it's best to keep them indoors around 65 degrees is what uh -huh. they like. However, you can have them as a patio plant in the summer. Um, oh. Just make sh making sure to bring it inside when the night temperatures start getting around 50 and 60 degrees. Okay, good to keep in mind. And I see we have some fertilizer. What? What's best to keep in mind when fertilizing your citrus tree? Yeah, so the best time to fertilize your citrus trees are when they're just starting to produce flowers and fruit. Um, it could sometimes be, I guess, the early spring. Um, the best fertilizer to look for is specifically anything that says fruit tree. Uh, we do have this citrus and fruit tree plant food, which is nice. I think you just mix in like a tablespoon per six inches for the size of your pot. So it okay. makes it nice and easy. You just sprinkle it on top and then as you walk Water it, uh, the fertilizer will seep down into the soil. And speaking of the size of your pot, I see we have quite a f quite a bit of variety here. How big oh, can absolutely. your citrus free citrus tree get? They can get. Uh, Pretty large, indoor speaking, um, probably not bigger though than around six feet. You can, however, Ooh. prune them to keep them a bit smaller. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, they get to being a good size indoors when taken really good care of. <laughs> and when it comes to pruning and watering, what, what do people need to know? Um, so pruning just, I think it's the lower branches that produce fruit and then the taller branches are the leaves or the foliage <laughs> for the uh, photosynthesizing. Um, so it's probably better not to trim so many of the lower branches because those will be your fruit producing branches. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, they're pretty fine to keep trimmed back so that way they won't get too big. Um, watering, they do like to dry down a bit between waterings, although they might uh, require just a little bit more moisture in the soil when they are producing fruit, just because more of that water is going into the produce. Well, thank you, Judina. A lot of important stuff to keep in mind when you're getting your citrus trees. And when you want to pick yours out, come check out Franz Witte. And if you have any questions, ask their experts. They can be sure to help you. It's on the corner of Chinden and 11th Avenue North, home of the Pink Flamingos. Well, folks, another sunny day ahead of us and a sunny week ahead of us here in the Treasure Valley. We'll likely see clear skies all day today here in Boise. Wind speeds will be quite, quite light throughout the morning. As we head into the afternoon, they'll start to pick up. We'll see a top wind speed of 11 miles an hour around 5 and 6 p.m. Then in terms of temperatures, we'll reach the upper 70s around 11 o'clock, jump into the upper 80s around 2 p.m., leading to a high today of 95 degrees in Boise. Expected to arrive sometime between 5 and 6 p.m. And let's take a look at temperatures right now. If you're heading out the door anytime soon, we're sitting in the mid-50s over in Nampa and in Mountain Home. 61 degrees the temperature right now over in Caldwell and 64 the temperature right now here in Boise then moving up to the mountains they're sitting right around average right now with a temperature of 45 degrees right now here over in McCall now we do have that high pressure not only here in the gem state but all around the west coast we are seeing that high pressure taking over which is going to bring out sunshine not only today pretty much all week now we are going to see some smoke moving up into the west central mountains today that smoke may drop down here in the Treasure Valley however it's going to be quite light and that smoke is going to quickly drop down into 
northern Nevada and northern Utah as we head into Saturday night. Now over the next couple of days, that slow warm up has already begun. High temperatures in the mid 90s today we will stay in the mid 90s over the weekend. Expect tons of sunshine this week and then we'll turn hot next week as high temperatures jump into the upper 90s to on Monday and then we'll jump up into the hundreds on Tuesday and Wednesday. As for the rest of the morning, temperatures will drop to our low of 62 degrees around 7 a.m. before jumping up to 65 around 8 a.m. Leading to our high today of 95 degrees in Boise. 95 also going to be the high over in Mountain Home and, and Ontario. 94 going to be the high over in Caldwell, Nampa and moving up to the mountains. 88 over in Idaho City. 84 going to be the high in Sun Valley and 81 degrees looking like the high in McCall today. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOY bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 639 this Friday morning, let's check in with Debbie McAllister for an update. Good morning. On Garrity, headed up to the freeway, traffic starts to slow down way before you get to Stam Lane. Starting to see some extra traffic on Karcher heading over to the freeway. Gets a little on the slow side right about Middleton Road. And in Caldwell on Franklin 2026, once again, heavy traffic both directions between Smead Parkway and the freeway. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in the car and hit the road, be sure you start your morning up to date with some team traffic updates. You can get those on KBOI. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. All right, now's the time for our question of the day. The question, nearly 60% of people say they do this for their pet if they could. I'm going to stick with my guess from the first hour. Probably not right, but I would definitely do this if my pet could do it. I would have them ride a skateboard like I've seen on Instagram or something like yeah. that. Those videos, the English Bulldogs riding. I like that, but yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> I like that one. I was going to say, um, there's a lot. I do anything for my dog. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe cloning them. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that's a good guess. I don't know. Two logos. I, I wish they lived Sounds longer. Sounds like a perfect world. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right I like that one. I really liked that guess from earlier. Um, teach them to talk, mm -hmm. but I think I'm going to stick with my answer of bring them to work. Okay, yep. sounds good. I like that one. I prefer yeah. that one. All right, Richard says feeding them people food. Oh, that's a good yeah, the one. Right people food for uh -huh. sure. <laughs> All right, yeah. Douglas says making them live longer forever. Oh, really? Yeah. Wish. yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. All right, let's see. What I love else that one. We have. Kathy says leaving your TV on while you're gone. I'll turn on you doggy know? TV for my puppy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And every once in a while, it keeps <laughs> they, them active, keeps them going. You know, they need especially to be kept when company. everyone's out of the house. So. Yeah. All right, I'm interested to see this answer. But folks, if you think you know the answer, you have 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can do that by heading to our Facebook page or Twitter, and we'll reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS this morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, we're hearing from survivors in the Maui wildfires and the disaster declaration now going into effect. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 644. Welcome back. For thousands of Hawaiians, everything they own and they know is now gone. The Lahaina community is burned to the ground after a wildfire spread quickly thanks to strong winds and dry conditions. Dozens are now dead. Many of those who got out had to leave everything behind, even their pets. Others were separated and can't reconnect yet because phone communications are down and there's no gasoline available. Lahaina looks like a bomb went off. There is nothing left. The entire village has been turned into rubble. It's a devastating sight to see. Everything that we own, you know, in all my 50 years of life is completely burned to the ground. Um, the home is gone. Survivors are now seeking shelter elsewhere on Maui. Others have gone to Oahu to shelter in the Honolulu Convention Center. President Biden authorizing major disaster declaration and FEMA is assisting. The winds have now died down, which is helping in the firefight. Turning to developing news this morning, new Labor Department data showing consumer inflation rose slightly in July. 2% annual inflation is considered normal. The current rate now sitting at 3.2%. It breaks a year-long streak of decline, which economists expected. Looking at what's happening right now, this month and this past quarter, inflation has continued to cool. Some items that are getting cheaper include used trucks, or used cars and trucks, as well as airfare. 
Meantime, more expensive car insurance contributing to a monthly inflation increase of 2%. But the biggest contributor, again, is the cost of housing. Well, as the U.S. battles inflation, China's economy charting into deflation territory as consumer prices there are dipping. Didi Gatton explains what this means and the potential impact for us in the U.S. After constantly hearing about inflation, deflation may sound good, keyword sound, but it's a lot more complicated. The opposite of inflation, of course, deflation is when there's a general decrease in prices. Financial experts say it may not necessarily be problematic, but when it's because there's a drop in demand, it can be. Now with China, the world's second largest economy, experiencing a decline in consumer prices and edging into deflation territory, there are fears over the impact on the U.S. Normally, markets don't like uh, uncertainty. They're a, a large uh, trading partner in the U.S. Um, I suppose the silver lining there is uh, Chinese goods could become less expensive to American consumers, uh, and that might help our inflation a little bit or help our prices from going up as much. But uh, if you were a producer in the U.S. and competed with a Chinese a producer, you say, wow, they're going to be able to sell for even less. That doesn't sound very good. That sounds like they're going to have the upper hand. Experts say producer prices have been falling in China since October. The youth unemployment rate is high and there are significant issues in the housing market. All of these factors fuel questions over where their economy is headed. Reporting for the National Desk, I'm Didi Gatton. Well, the Writers Guild of America and Hollywood Studios are having a sit down today to continue their negotiations. The goal is to try and end the ongoing strike that's now put a halt to your favorite stars on the screen. For more than 100 days, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers and the Writers Guild of America have not seen eye to eye on various issues. Those include the use or non-use of artificial intelligence, higher salaries and better residuals from streaming platforms. Well, looking ahead, it is rodeo season, and if you haven't already dusted off your boots, Alana and Chris of Kiss at 92.3, they have a reason to break out your dance moves. Hey, it's Alana and Chris from Kiss at 92.3, here to tell you about some awesome events happening in the Treasure Valley uh, during rodeo time. Of course, Caldwell Night Rodeo, we got the kickoff party happening tomorrow at Indian Creek Plaza. And I love the name of this, Boots, Buckles, and Brew. So you got to wear your boots. <laughs> You got to wear your buckles yeah. and uh, drink some brew. Enjoy some brew. Like, what more do you need now? Kiss 92.3. We're going to be hanging out there tomorrow. It is going down from uh, 6 until 10 at Indian Creek Plaza with a little barn dance action, too. Ooh. So we have seen your swing dancing in action at so many different concerts. So we expect good things out there tomorrow at Indian Creek Plaza. Ah, should be a good time. And that weather really holding up over the weekend. Yeah, mm -hmm. really a great Great forecast for the weekend. Yeah, great setup for the weekend and great setup for the week ahead. We may start to warm up into the hundreds on Tuesday and Wednesday for the start of the Caldwell Night Rodeo. But as for this weekend, we'll see those high temperatures in the mid 90s and all week this week. We are going to be seeing sunshine here in the Treasure Valley and all around the Pacific Northwest. We'll be seeing that sunshine as well as high pressure takes over the entire region. Now, looking to future cast, we are going to see clear skies throughout the morning as we head into the afternoon. We may see some light cloud cover over in the West Central Mountains and in the Oahis as well but in general, we're going to see clear skies all around the Gem State today. Now, tomorrow morning, we are going to see some cloud cover moving over McCall and the West Central Mountains. That'll be from 10 a.m. till about 11 a.m. And then those clouds will drop down into the Treasure Valley. We may see some partly cloudy skies from 12 p.m. till about 2.30 p.m. before those clouds start to clear out. And then we are going to see some clear skies throughout Saturday evening. Now, here's a look at the seven-day forecast. High temperatures are going to drop down to our average of 93 degrees here in Boise tomorrow. Then those high temperatures should start to warm up as we head into next week. We'll see a high at 94 degrees on Sunday. And those high temperatures will jump up into the upper 90s on Monday. Now, Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to see 100 degree highs around the Treasure Valley. We'll see a high of 100 degrees in Boise on Tuesday and 101 looking like the high on Wednesday. Then by Thursday, those high temperatures should drop back down into the upper 90s. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, we'll see sunny skies all week as well. A little bit of haze going to hang around the, the West Central Mountains this morning. High temperature is going to be in the low 80s both today and tomorrow, but those high temperatures should warm up into the mid 80s by Sunday. And they'll likely stay in the mid 80s on Monday. Now by Tuesday, those high temperatures are going to warm up into the upper 80s. you will see a high of 89 degrees over McCall on Tuesday and 89 also going to be the high on Wednesday. Then those high temperatures are going to dip back down into the mid 80s on Thursday in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. 
CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take one last live look out there at 651 this Friday morning, let's get an update from Debbie McAllister. Good morning, some congested traffic in Caldwell on Franklin 2026, both directions between Smead Parkway and the freeway. Heavy traffic on Karcher heading over to the freeway starts at Middleton Road. Also, lots of traffic heading up to the freeway on Northside Boulevard, and that starts before you get to 6th Street North, and we're also seeing heavy traffic on Garrity heading up to the freeway. From the KBOI Newsroom, excuse me, the traffic studio, I'm Debbie McAllister. Thank you, Debbie. And when you hop in your car this Friday morning and hit the road, be sure you turn on KBOI for some team traffic updates. You can get those on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News, Russia launching its first mission to the moon in decades. The latest on the Kremlin's crew who will touch down. It's 6.54. Welcome back. CBS2 is your home for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic. And this year, we have 50 balloons that'll lift off from Ann Morrison Park. I love, I love the unique designs, the patriotic designs. It really, really reinforces America. And again, who doesn't love the Coca-Cola balloon? The Balloon Classic, beginning with Cap Ed Kids Day, that's Wednesday, August 30th. It continues through Labor Day weekend with balloons taking off each and every morning. Then on Friday night, we have Night Glow. That's a special event that families will remember forever. We're going to have food trucks. We're going to have entertainment and, of course, the wonderful pilots. And the Night Glow is just simply indescribable. We hope you join us for the Spirit of Boise Balloon Classic from Ann Morrison Park. Our coverage already underway on IdahoNews.com. Well, Russia is sending a lunar landing to the moon. The spacecraft successfully launched last night. It's Russia's first mission to the moon since 1976. The Luna 25 is expected to reach the south pole of the moon in about two weeks. India has a craft targeting the same area at the same time. No spacecraft has landed there smoothly. NASA says the real space race is between the U.S. and China, which both have plans to send manned missions there as well. And if indeed we find water in abundance there that could be utilized for future crews and spacecraft, uh, we want to make sure that that's available to all, not just to one that's claiming it. 28 countries have signed on to the Artemis Accords, a pact underscoring the peaceful and cooperative use of space. NASA wishes Russia well on its mission. All right, it's time for our question of the day. And that question is nearly 60% of people say they would do this for their pet if they could. What is it? That answer, donate a kidney to them. Oh yeah, I feel like everyone I... would do anything for their pets. Anything. Here, here. <laughs> All right, we hope you have a great